Looking for some fun ways to add vellum to your cards? Well, stay tuned because I have five ways that you can add vellum to your card designs. Hello, crafty friends. This is Christina. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you five of my favorite techniques that I like to use when working with vellum in my card designs. And if you stick around to the very end, I may have a bonus sixth technique that I can share. Let's go ahead and get started. For my vellum, I, on a whim a couple years ago, I was working on a project and needed some vellum that I could print. I had other vellum that wasn't printable. When I printed it, it smeared. And this vellum is a, a nice white uh, transparency. It's 93 GSM and it's about $14 for 100 sheets. And I think that's a great price because I see um, some other vellum that's maybe 10, 10, 11, 12, 15 sheets, and they're anywhere from five to $10 for just a couple of sheets. I keep mine in my same clear pockets that I use for my cardstock storage, but I did add a piece of chipboard to the back just to keep it so it's nice and sturdy because if it's in uh, a holder or standing up or anything like that, the sheets will slip down. So I wanted something to keep it in there so that it didn't get warped. Adhesive is definitely a hard one when it comes to vellum because no matter what you use, you're going to see it through the, the vellum. I have found that scrapbook.com's double-sided tape works great with vellum, especially on lighter colored cardstock. If you're using a darker colored cardstock, you are gonna be able to see it. But what you could do is actually take this, uh, one of these larger rolls and stick your vellum to this, cut it out, and then put it onto your cardstock. And you'll see a little bit of bubbling, but if you use one of your scrapers, like if you do vinyl projects, one of the scrapers that you use for your vinyl, you can get most of them out. You will see a few of them, but lighter cardstock, you can barely see it at all. So if you are using lighter cardstock, I would definitely recommend the scrapbook.com. I have not found any other tape that um, works well that you're not gonna see through it in the trans or the vellum. So what you would want to do is find creative ways to hide your different types of adhesives that you're using. I do have these clear tabs. I have these have been in my stash for a long time. They're so old and they are a clear tab that does still kind of show through the transparency, but I have used them a couple of times. They have like a, a little craft uh, colored sticker on the top, but they are a clear, clear, um, like dimensional adhesive. And you could use this in certain cases, but this package is so old. I don't even know if the Tombow makes these anymore. I've had them for so long and I bought them apparently on clearance for $2.99. Those are just a couple of adhesive options and some tips that you might want to know for when you're, you're working with vellum. Technique number one is going to be using your embossing folders. I shared this technique actually in my embossing folder video that I did not too long ago, which I will link down below in the description if you missed it, but you can go ahead and emboss your vellum. And I love the way this turns out. So I'm just gonna stick my vellum right in here. I have my plates here, so I am going to run this right through my die cutting machine. So what I like about using embossing folders on my vellum is that I really like the, not only the texture it gives, but some of the uh, folders that have like the really harsher edges will give you just a light white um, outline of that image that was embossed. I also like to take these and put them onto just plain colored cardstock. It could be a nice bright color, a lighter color, it doesn't matter. And I like just putting them right over the top. It kind of softens the look of the color and I think it just makes it for a nice background on a card. Since I have my die cut machine out, I thought I would talk about how we can use vellum with die cuts. I already went ahead and die cut these cute leaves that were from a leaf set and I'm going to bring in my acrylic plates and die cut the vellum with the same dies that I used to cut the leaves in cardstock. Now these are Spellbinders dies and they're very detailed and I did test this out before I did it and I do really like the way this looks but because it's so detailed 
it does um, tear a little bit in the middle because the of the um, design of the die. So just keep that in mind. You might have that that problem, but it doesn't tear the whole thing apart. It's just that it's such a lighter piece of lightweight cardstock or paper that it um, you can see it. So we're just going to go ahead and remove our dies here. I think one of them is stuck. Yep. <laughs> so one is stuck inside of the the die piece. So we are just going to go ahead and take these off. Now, some of them did kind of do get kind of get stuck into the acrylic, and I found just using one of my little knives here. This is my dirty knife for messy work. It's easy just to kind of stick underneath there and get those up off there. So you can see on this one right here, it did give a little bit of a tear because of the um, the style of the die. But it works great to add a little extra dimension to your die cuts. You can offset your die. You can actually just make it a part of however you're using this little gathering of of leaves. You can um, even put it over the top of the die to kind of mute the color if you want to. So there's so many different ways. I prefer doing it so that it's just a part of our element. So either keeping it so it's a little offset or just making a part of our, our elements that we're adding to our card. So I would keep them all kind of behind and kind of stick them in there just to create little, like a little cluster of leaves along with the, from the cardstock and the vellum. Let's talk about different ways we can use stamps on our vellum. I am going to start off with just using a stays on ink. I like to use something that's fast drying because it is a slicker surface and a regular ink probably won't dry fast enough. So if you do use a regular ink, you're going to want to probably either heat set it, set it aside until it dries or use a, an embossing powder over the top of it. So I'm going to use my stays on. If you're not familiar with stays on and I've had my stays on for I can't even tell you a very long time. I labeled mine uh, because I put it into my cabinet or into one of my storage units. And they always come with these little protective um, covers on them because it helps keep that ink uh, wetter longer so you don't have to uh, do any kind of refills. And I can tell you I don't even have a refill for this and have never refilled it and added ink to it. And this thing is, uh, this has to be at least 10 years old so we'll see how well it's uh, holding up as far as inking so I'm just gonna go ahead and ink my my stamp here and I'm just gonna stamp it right into the center of my vellum and I didn't give it an even pressure but I did get ink out of my stays on so that's great because this thing I like I said I don't even have a refill for it and this is how it turns out we got a nice little image and I'm just gonna run my finger over it and you can see it's completely dry. If I tried to do another ink, let's bring in my me Memento ink here, it's not going to dry very fast. We can stamp it, do the same thing. I put my lid on the other one, let it sit for even a second or two. I'm just gonna take my finger and we smear. So you definitely wanna use a fast drying ink something permanent like stays on. Another way that we can use stamps onto vellum is to use Versamark and then use our embossing powder. So I have a cute little flower already added to my block here and we're just gonna go ahead and stamp that out onto the cardstock. And whenever I'm using uh, Versamark, I always like to wait an extra second or two just to make sure that that Versamark, which is so thick, transfers nicely onto my vellum. I'm just adding a piece of cardstock underneath so that we can use embossing powder to sprinkle this onto our, our stamped image here. And it stamps so beautifully. And as a matter of fact, it's such a slick surface that I have never once used my little anti-static powder bag, or if you have one of those little brushes, the anti-static powder brushes, um, I've never had an issue with uh, too much of the embossing powder sticking to places that I don't want it to because it's such a nice slick surface. So when I'm heat embossing, I like to heat up my heat gun first and let it warm up so that um, we're spending as little time as possible 
onto the actual vellum. This particular vellum seems to hold up really well to heat, but I still like to go ahead and heat it up first just to make sure that I'm not gonna either burn or melt um, any of the any of the vellum. So you can see how quickly that changed and I really like using black and white embossing powders for sentiments and, and creating these little uh, cute outlined images. So another way we can actually do this too is to bring in those gorgeous beautiful big flower stamps that we have. And I have this particular one right here. This is one by Gina K. I think it's called a, a Little Note or something like that. And I am going to bring in my Misty for this because it's a little bit of a bigger bigger stamp. And I'm not going to be perfect with this. We are just doing this as an example. So I'm going to stick my vellum into my Misty. And I use just the mini Misty. That's the only one I have. And I absolutely love this. And we need to find a really good way to put this in. Let me grab another piece of vellum. All right, so I have my bigger piece of vellum here. I'm gonna put my magnet in here, although it really doesn't really hold it very well. And we're just gonna go ahead and stick this big, beautiful flower down. And we'll transfer this over to our lid of our Misty. We'll just readjust our vellum, make sure it's in the corner there. And then I'm gonna come in again with the Versamark. Give this a really good inking. And again, I'm not gonna use my anti-static bag on this, on the vellum. I'm just gonna go right in with the Versamark. That's a pretty big size stamp, so I'm just making sure that I'm getting all the middle parts and center parts all poked down there. Oh, I'm already seeing, that is gorgeous. I'm already seeing how beautiful it is. I am going to grab my piece of white cardstock and I am gonna try out this Brutus Monroe embossing powder. This is the gold embossing powder. It's actually called Gilded. And I am going to sprinkle this on and this is a great way to add a nice little foiling look if you don't have any type of foiling machine or anything like that. So I'm gonna give that a couple of taps. It didn't do a great job in getting all of the uh, embossing powder covered, but this is just an example. I'm just going to heat up my heat gun again. And that's the first time I've ever used the Brutus Monroe embossing powders and I love how it came out. I think this would just be gorgeous on a simple like cream colored or white colored card base as a wedding gift to go with the wedding gift, um, an anniversary card or, any, or even a sympathy. You can even use this for a sympathy card. I just think that is gorgeous. So next we're going to talk about ways that we can color our vellum. The first thing I did was I stamped out that little cute little floral image that we stamped earlier. I stamped out another one. My favorite way is to use my alcohol ink markers. I will tell you that if you try to use lighter colors, it might not show up as well. So I'm gonna go with either a medium or the darker color. These are the Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers, which means that they're um, three different shades of green built into one marker. And these are just the, the neatest little markers. So I'm gonna try out going with the medium color. I have not tried these um, lighter colors on this particular type of vellum before. So I'm gonna give this a try. So I'm just gonna take, what I did was I flipped over my vellum. So I'm coloring on the back side of my vellum. This way it won't matter if I go a little bit over onto the white areas of our embossing powder. And I'm coloring my flower green. I realized that after I did it. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little backwards coloring today. Our flower is gonna be green and our leaves are gonna be pink. So that's the medium color 
on this one and we're going to pull out the medium color on this one so we're going to have a nice colorful different flower so this actually this light pink does not come out very well so i am going to switch out to the much darker color that's better So there we go, we have the backside colored, and then when we flip it over, we have this more softer tone of the colors that we just used. So we have our backwards flower with our green, our green uh, petals and our pink leaves. And for the other one, I'm going to do my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. And I am just going to go in and color in, I'm not doing any shading with this, you can if you want to, but I find just doing the solid colors is way better than trying to do any kind of shading. So I'm gonna go in and color in this flower. And then when we flip it over, we have a pretty flower here that has a nice yellow petals and green leaves. And what I do is I like to, because this does take a little bit longer to dry, and it is pretty warm in here today, so it's drying up pretty quick. But I'm just gonna take my heat gun and give it a, just a quick blast, just to make sure that that's nice and dry and won't smear. You don't wanna go too long because you don't want to uh, reactivate your embossing powder, which if you've ever tried to, if you've ever over embossed uh, in, or overheated embossing powder, it never comes out very well. But you can see I, went ahead and just dried that up and I've got nothing. It's not smearing. So it works out wonderfully. So another way to add color to vellum is to bring out those inks and blending brushes. So I just grabbed um, a Simon Says Stamp ink and one of my blending brushes. And I am just going to drop that right onto my vellum. You do have to kind of set this aside for a little bit to dry because it does stay a little bit wet longer. Now we have a really pretty shade of this colored vellum that we can use also to, you can even run this through your embossing folder, get some embossed images on it. You can add a sentiment onto here using your stays on ink or your embossing powders. So those are two of my favorite ways to add different types of different colorings to our vellum. Another way to use vellum is to take a piece of cardstock. I already went ahead and die cut this using a stackable or layering framed dies. And I created just a square in the center of a panel of cardstock that I would use on an A2 size card. I'm gonna take this and adhere it down to the back of that panel. So as you can see, we're just gonna adhere it right to the back and I'm gonna grab just some of my dot running glue and I will probably put it onto my, I will probably put it right onto my cardstock because that would be the easier way than trying to see where on the vellum I would need to put it. But as I put this on, you're going to see how that dot runner looks through the panel. So you can see through the vellum, you've got all these little, you could actually kind of see the blue through it. So we're putting it on the back so it doesn't matter. So those are, you know, you have to do kind of think about those creative ways on how to hide your, your vellum or hide your adhesive. And then if you want to take this up one step, you can add a little uh, frame around it. So this is a frame that came from the same die set that I used to cut my square panel. And I'm just gonna add some adhesive to there. and we're just gonna use it to kind of frame out a window on the front of our card. So what you could do here is then add some, uh, an embossed sentiment right here in the panel, layer this onto your white cardstock, and then put your embossed sentiment in the center here. You can put your embossed sentiment down here. You can even add some of those pretty leaves that we cut out with our vellum earlier. Let's see, grab two more here and even tuck these into the frame, just like so you can have these kind of bouncing out or sticking out of our frame, just like so. I already put my adhesive down, so it's, if you were thinking ahead of time, then we would have done it for, put these in too. 
Um, so you can have those sticking right, set, right outside of your frame. That's just an example of ways that you can do that. So another thing you could take with these window cards is make it into a shaker card. I'm gonna go ahead and add double layer of foam adhesive on the back. So I added a double layer of foam adhesive there and I have these sequins that have, there's stars and hearts and all these pretty little shapes in here and it's one of those ones that I've had around for a long time. I'm trying to do this where I know I don't spill it everywhere because it's pretty full. So we're just gonna go ahead and sprinkle a whole bunch of these right into that panel. And then we're gonna take another piece of cardstock and set it right over the top and that's gonna hold our little embellishments in place there on our shaker card. So we flip it over, look how cute that is. I love that you can just faintly see the sequins right through that little, that little window. That was our fifth technique. You ready for a bonus? Let's go ahead and get that one going. For our sixth technique, which is our bonus technique, we are going to do some foiling. So I have my Glimmer Hot Foil system all plugged in, ready to go. I have my embossing folder. I switched out my acrylic plates for my Glimmer plates, brought out my mat, I've got my magnet. We are all good to go with doing a little bit of foiling onto some vellum. For the plate, I'm gonna be using the Scattered Hearts background, and we are going to set this up. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to add a piece of 110 pound cardstock. Now, this is what works for me. This might not work for everybody. It depends on your vellum, it depends on your machines, but this is what's been working for me right now. So what we're gonna do is lay our vellum down, and then I like to put my foil on top. So we're gonna put the pretty side facing up, and then we're gonna take our plate and put the plate side facing down or the decorative side facing down. I like to use my thin or my mint blue tape to go right across all of this and hold everything into place. And the reason why I do that is just to make it a little bit easier because I am going to be actually adding some cardstock to the back. So I could have just built it all up, but for me, I like to add that. I just find it keeps everything in place the way I want it to. So I'm gonna set this down on top of my system here. I'm going to add a piece of cardstock. So this is the 110 pound cardstock. I'm gonna hit the timer and add my two plates. While we're waiting for this to heat up, the reason why I'm using 110 pound cardstock is because usually the foiling machines work like a letterpress. It indents a little bit of that image that's on the plate into the cardstock. So it kind of depresses it into, into the um, into the cardstock. But vellum doesn't, it's so thin, it doesn't have a way for it to accept the the pressure. So adding that 110 pound cardstock helps transfer that foil onto the vellum much easier. So we're just waiting for this to, to finish heating up. I do have a video here on my channel that talks about um, all the different things about the foil machine and what you need to know. We, I think we did a cardstock test. I'll leave a link to that at the end of this video and I will also put it in the description below along with the uh, video for our embossing folder techniques. I'm just gonna slip this right out of the machine and we're gonna run this through our die cutter. And I don't go super fast. I'm not super slow either. I kind of go at a nice medium uh, pace when I'm running this through my machine. I don't have to usually go through twice. I know some people do recommend that you run it through twice, but one seems to work just fine for me. I get the best results that way. But you do what's, uh, what works best for your type of material, the type of cardstock or vellum or whatever you're using. So when I pull up this piece of cardstock, you're gonna see that the cardstock has the impression of the hearts that were on that plate. We can even use that for a nice background as well. I am going to pull up our vellum. I'm gonna grab my little magnet here so we can get this hot plate off of there. And now as for the fun part, it's the reveal time. I love the way the foil sticks to the vellum. Now this is the Spellbinders vellum. This is what came with my machine. I've got tons of gold because I have, I'm still running through what came in the machine, plus I have a bunch of colors that I haven't quite opened up yet. 
but I just think that transfers beautifully. This would also make a nice cover for a shaker card or one of those windows, and as obviously just for a nice background for the back of uh, layering on a card. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and found some new ways to use vellum or even some old ways that maybe techniques that you forgot about. I do have a series of videos that I've been working on that is for beginner card making. I'm going to leave a link to that video right at the very end of this video and I will also have the embossing folder and the Glimmer hot foil system videos in the description below along with any of the supplies that I use for today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give this uh, video a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, do all the YouTube things, and I will catch you guys all in the next video. Thanks for watching.